In problem number 23 of section 2.2, we're given a continuous function on the closed interval a, b. And since it's closed, we know by the extreme value theorem that it has both a minimum and a maximum, called the minimum lowercase m and the maximum uppercase m. Uh, and we're asked to prove that uh, the minimum times the length of the interval uh, is less than the Riemann sum of our function f. Uh, which, again, is less than or equal to the maximum times the length of the interval. And the picture that we want to have in mind, if we have some function f, and uh, it's a little bit different. Let's say we're looking at the interval uh, a to b. Well, you can see that it has uh, so if we look at the um, this interval a b. Uh, we see that it has well a minimum um, right there and a maximum right there. So if we're trying to approximate the area under the graph. Um, we can see that, uh, well, it's de certainly going to be less than um, this area here, or it's certainly going to be greater than this area here, because if we take the minimum times the uh, interval length, we're going to be missing a lot of uh, value there. And similarly, if we take the maximum, we're going to be kind of overestimating, we're going to get all this area. So that's kind of the, interpre the uh, geometric interpretation of this. But to actually show it um, using Riemann sums and partitions and sample sets and all of that, uh, we'll just start using the, with the minimum. Uh, know that the Riemann sum of f, um, here I'm just going to assume that I'm using any arbitrary partition and any arbitrary sample set on that partition. So the uh, Riemann sum will be i equals 1 to n of f of si times uh, delta xi. Now, notice that all of these terms are going to be greater than 0 um, since the sample set is defined to be an increasing sequence. We start with the left-hand endpoint and then go up in, uh, to a you know, value a little bit higher and a little bit greater and a little bit greater. So if we apply the difference function, we're taking you know, a high, greater value minus a lower value. So this will always be positive. Uh, meaning we have you know, a sum of uh, positive terms here, well, except for the f of si, but we know that uh, for each of these terms, um, the, uh, if we replace f of s i with a minimum, we're going to get something that's smaller. Um, right, since we know that um, m is always less than or equal to f of s i. So we you know that this is term is, or this expression is always greater than uh, m times uh, xi minus xi minus 1, where we sum from i equals 1 to n. And now this is equal to um, m times the telescoping sum, so we end up with xn minus x naught. But recall with the that x naught is equal to the lower hand endpoint, which is a, and xn is equal to the upper endpoint, which is b. So this is m times b minus a. And so we see that we get the we get half of our desired uh, of our desired result. We have that. Uh, um, 
that the Riemann sum is greater than or equal to m times b minus a, uh, which is exactly what the, the first half says. Now, to compute the other half is um, very similar. Well, now we notice that um, f of si is less than um, less than uh, the maximum capital M um, for well any value of si. I mean, M is the maximum. It's just the definition. Uh, so we can say that uh, this is less than or equal to. Uh, the sum from i equals 1 to n of capital M times delta xi. And again, this goes to capital M times uh, the telescoping sum, which as before goes to b minus a. So this gives us the other part of the inequality that uh, the Riemann sum of f on the interval a to b is less than or equal to uh, the maximum times the length of the interval.